friends. Uh, today I thought it would be fun to do a media demonstration video for you about this giraffe, which is a really popular art lesson for birthday parties and just different things like that, but also using watercolor paint. So this is something that people really enjoy and I just wanted to just do a quick demo here for you so that you are, you know, in case you want to do this art lesson sometime, then you would know that this is an option um, for how to finish it. So anyway, I've already got it drawn, obviously. Remember guys, if you like this video or if you share it, more importantly, or let your friends know about it or invite your friends to like it, any of those things make a huge difference. I will personally mail you one of these Arts Hub magnets. It goes on the refrigerator. It's great, as you can see, to hold up your artwork. If this was on a refrigerator, it'd look pretty cool. Um, and I'll send you a personal note as well, just to say thank you. So please help us out. It makes a big difference. All right, guys, so the supplies you're going to need today, uh, definitely some different size brushes. So you can see I have small, medium, and large here. And I've got my paint. So this is just from a tray of paint. This is Crayola. I took the label off, but this is Crayola. And I've got a cup of water, and I've got a couple of paper towels handy. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can do this, but I just wanted to show you how it looks. I'm going to get started, and um, then I'm going to just do it in time lapse. This one will be just kind of fun and relaxing. So... I'm going to get started with my medium brush and uh, I'm going to do that by doing the brown spots first. I'm going to do those first and just let those dry and while they're drying I'm going to work on other parts of that because I don't want the brown of these spots to, to get into all the yellow that I'm going to do on the fur. So you can do whatever color you want. I just wanted to show you a few tips and techniques that help you kind of get to the uh, end result. So very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting some water into my paint. So this is watercolor paint and one people don't sometimes think about is the fact that you really need the water to soak into the paint to turn it into paint. And this has lots of really rich color. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of like stirring it with my brush because this is a cake, a cake of paint. But as you can see, this is making a nice rich brown. So not only is brown cool, I mean it's a nice brown, that's true, but I wanted to show you something else. So I'm taking it and I'm putting it in this mixing tray. That's what this is here on the side, it's for mixing colors. So I'm just going to continue to lift it out, put it over here. I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to go in now to my orange and I'm going to do the same thing I did to the brown to the orange. So I'm just taking the, you see I have it on my brush and I'm literally just putting it in there. So it's like a little pool on top of the cake of orange paint. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a couple stirs here. When I say stirring, it's not doing a whole lot of, it's not like you're stirring a pancake batter or something like that. It's, you're just stirring up the paint so that it gets nice and rich. And so I'm going to put some of that right here. That looks nice. But why I did that is I wanted to show you, I'm actually going to mix my orange into my brown so that I have a nice color brown that is a little different than straight out of the package. So I'm going to add a little more brown, rinse my brush, and I'm going to add some more orange to it. Now you may wonder why I'm not putting it directly in there, and that's because I'm trying to keep it clean. So I'm going to put it right here first, but then I'm going to just basically lift it and move it over here. So I'm mixing and moving these colors. And now I'm ready to start. So I'm just going to start by putting this paint down. It's okay if you go over the lines. Watercolor paint is supposed to be kind of soft and uh, sort of free and, you know, free as in moving around freely. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get started with this, guys. And I just wanted to show you a couple things real quick. I'm going to do these two spots and I'm going to then talk about a little bit of shading. So I have put the paint on. I'm going to now take a little bit of black and I'm just going to put it in there just a little bit. And what that's going to do is I'm not putting a lot in there, but you can see how it's creating a little bit of a shadow and that's going to look really neat. So I'm just going to take a, a light touch with that black and I'm just going to kind of put it on there and just let it sit and see what happens. You'll see how the paint just kind of does its own thing. Putting a little brown on there. Just gonna let it sit like that. Take a little more orange. 
So as you can see, it's already looking pretty cool. Uh, the paint kind of moves around and pulls up and dries in interesting patterns. That's one of the reasons why watercolor paint is so pretty. All right, guys, I'm going to move on in time lapse and uh, I'll come back and do some more talking in a few minutes. Here we go. So guys, doesn't that look cool? So you notice that I moved on to my little tiny brush here for certain little things. And uh, you can add a little bit of that black into your brown. You can see how this is kind of pooling up and looking really neat. And so you can move it around with your finger if you want to. If it's not kind of in the right spot, you can always just adjust it a little bit with your finger. Um, so I'm going to let those spots dry. And that's because I don't want... I'm going to put yellow on these other parts. And... Um, before I do that, I just wanted to say this: the, the mane, this is the mane of your giraffe. Uh, it's kind of like got some, not stripes exactly, but it's got a little bit of brown in there and a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to add that before I forget. Just a little touch of those colors. And then I'm going to put yellow on top of that later. And I'm going to put a little bit of this shadow color in the ears as well. Just don't forget about these little touches. It just makes it look so cool. It makes it look really finished. But anyway. So I'm going to let all that dry for a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn my paper upside down so I can't possibly smudge that with my elbow or my sleeve. I'm going to rinse my brush out. I'm going to work now on the sky. So I'm going to keep going with my medium brush. Just really rinse out things really well. Use your paper towel. You see how if you can't see any color on there, then it's clean. So if you still see color, it's not perfectly clean, but it's also not that dirty either. So I'm going to clean up a little spot here so I can have a nice fresh spot for some blue. And I'm going to put this right back there. It's easier to see the color if your uh, white paper towel is under your mixing tray. If you notice, my mat here is blue. And so sometimes it makes it hard to see the colors. So speaking of blue, this Crayola paint set has a really fabulous blue. And I'm going to put that right there. But I am going to rinse it out and I'm going to add some purple. Again, I'm loading up the cake of paint with some water and stirring it. And I'm going to start putting that purple in there. And it's going to make the most beautiful purplish blue. I just love it. I really think it's pretty. So I'm going to add that. Keep on adding. There we go. All right. I've got a good amount right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Take my time, I'm not rushing. I'm just gonna go across like this. And I'm gonna come down here. And you see there's no thing for it to like mix into because these are all the dry spots. I might get a little trouble over here on this other side, but we'll see. I don't think so. Oops. So I'm gonna keep going here. Just going to go around and around. And hopefully these have dried enough. I think they did. If there accidentally is any mixing or blending in here, it'll, it'll just look cool and artsy. So, But our goal is to try, to try to avoid that. So I'm just going around this guy. And there we go. Now this is very wet. This paint has a lot of water in it right now. And when it has a lot of water in it, you can do some really cool stuff. So what I wanted to show you is I'm going to go back into my purple now and I'm just going to put some purple and some blue and some water and just you can make it more intense meaning the color can be brighter. It's kind of fun to get those splotches in there. Whoops. And it's okay if you go over an edge. Don't worry. It's all good. So I'm just going to keep going here add a few more of these little splotches but I wanted to show you something else as well so I'm just kind of letting the brush do its thing letting the paint do its thing I'm getting that purple now so one thing I want to show you and I'm gonna use a clean paper towel for this is you can also 
lift the color. So I'm going to place this flat and lift it off. And the pattern of the paper towel, I don't know if you can see that, the pattern of the paper towel shows up in the sky. So that's just a kind of a fun thing. That's what it looks like. You can see where the paint is. It's like a print. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. If you like that, go for it. If not, no worries. Just thought I'd show that to you. So down here is also the sky. And so when you're doing this, it's sometimes, you know, a good idea to just take your time. But if you think you forgot something, it's okay. Just go back and work on it. You can see the sky just a little bit below this tree. Add that purple again. Really pump up that color, make it intense. Then because I did this uh, paper towel treatment to the sky, I'm gonna do it here too. So I'm just gonna take it like this, lay it down, lift it off, and it just makes it look kind of neat. It always makes it a little different. You can do this paper towel technique if you want to the spots as well on your giraffe. I'm only gonna do it to the sky. All right, so I'm just gonna do the rest of this in time lapse. I'll come back and do a conclusion at the end. I just wanted to show you that. It's off to a great start. All right, let's do the time lapse. guys uh, th that was really cool I hope you enjoyed that I really love this painting process and just using the watercolor paint in this way is really fun as you can see I've got you know some really beautiful colors here and they are not just strictly straight out of the container I did some mixing in this mixing tray um, if you remember with the Sun here I did orange and red so I put orange on there first and then I just dipped my brush in the red and I just put a little couple of blobs of red on there and just let the water mix it for me um, I did the same thing with uh, the green down here. I did green and yellow, and then I added a little blue and just put a couple of dabs of blue in there to make the greens the darker color that I needed for the tree and the leaves to make them stand out. Also, um, I did the, a different shade of brown here by just mixing the brown and the black together. So those are ways that you can change up the color and you can see how there's like a little bit of shadow on some of these spots, a little bit of a shadow on the side of the face under the eyes. These are all details that make your, your drawing and your painting look really great. So think about that. I wanted to point out to you too that you can see that your paper towels are going to get really colorful. Um, some people think they're works of art in and of themselves. So uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. I know that a lot of my students always want to save their paper towels, but I can see why. They're pretty cool. But always have extra paper towels handy. And as you saw me doing some blotting earlier, Blotting is when you go straight up and straight down. It soaks up some of that extra water. The key is to let the paint sit on your paper for a couple of minutes. And this is watercolor paper, so it's designed to soak up the color. That basically stains the paper, and when you lift off the extra moisture with blotting with a clean paper towel, it just takes off the extra water, not the paint. So that is an important step for sure. Also, guys, I wanted to just say one last thing. Um, so when you come down to your paint like this, you know that I've said I mixed some blue into my green. Well, there's still some green in my blue now. A good way to keep your paints nice and ready for the next time is to use a paper towel to just kind of clean them off like this. And so when you come back the next time, they'll be ready to go. And that is a really nice way just to make sure your paint is ready for you next time when it's time to paint. So now I'm going to let this uh, dry open and then when I close it, uh, it'll be ready to go for next time. But just let it dry open, okay, maybe for a couple of hours. All right, guys, well, that is it for today's demo. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. I will just see you next time, friends. Mm -hmm.